blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I'm sorry. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Verse 10. Blessed is he. Blessed is the coming kingdom of the Father of David. Hosanna in the highest. Another key verse. Number, number 11. Where it picks up for us. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. Okay, very important. This is what we're talking about with the temple today. Jesus entered Jerusalem and came to the temple. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. So this is hey, if you want to start at verse 12 and go down through 15, probably. On the day following, when they had come away from Bethany, he was hungry, and seeing in the distance a fig tree, he went to see if he could find his food on it. But when he came up to it, he found nothing but a girl. So the fig tree had not yet come. And he said to it, No one ever again shall eat from you. And his disciples were listening to what he said. And they came to Jerusalem and he went into the temple and began to run out all the stone and bars in the temple area. And he overturned the table of the money chamber and the seats of those who fell. You can be 
doing something and you would not even know if somebody's watching you and you do it to the detriment of God and not to the fulfillment of God. And you at that moment have destroyed a potential believer because of what you did. Or well, you thought somebody was watching you, but we read in the scripture, God is already watching. He's already seen it. He's already seen it. So get back to the temple temple. But our personal temple just stays so close to me because that's just the way God gave it to me. He is talking about his temple, his holy place, the building. But we are, go ahead, Sister Faith. Yeah, you know, this infiltrate 
or put a spirit in the house of God that should not be there? What have we personally done? Because we've all entered into this house, this sanctuary. But what have we personally done to um, declare it almost like a being a thief? I mean, we may not have sold and, and did the money and dot, 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 but what have you done? What has your spirit brought through the house? But what have you brought through this sanctuary? Have you uplifted the kingdom while you were here? Or have you in your mind, oh, pastor's preaching now, I don't hear what he got to say, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sitting there not rejoicing in the word, not accepting the word that he or whomever speaking is doing, it. got something negative to say about the person that's speaking, and got your heart uh, bound up with something that shouldn't be there. Because again, if it's in the heart, it's in the mind, it's in the hand, then it's done. So what have you, these are personal questions, and everything to me in the scripture, God has written it in, the men of God are written it in, in translation as God's given it to them. But it, it should hit you personally in every area. It should make you think, what have I done in this temple? Have I ever degraded the temple of God? And, and if you're honest, you have. There's been many times all of us at one time or another, maybe as a child, we, we messed up the temple sometimes. We really have. I remember growing up, and I had the Sunday school teacher, I love her to what is love her. She's a, she's a daddy, I don't know, of course. 100 years old, praise God. Didn't look like she was hungry, but she would get on us. Don't be chewing, chewing gum. We tell them, don't, no gum in the house of God. It was, I know, a big deal to have no chewing gum. You know, you want your breath to smell good and dope. Then there's, a little, then there's another little lady sitting there giving you chewing gum. Anyway, you know, she was called the, the, the bubble gum lady. She had the candy and everything, and she giving it to you. So you think, okay, I can chew gum in the chocolate. No chewing gum in the Don't know we having that. We ain't drinking water in the temple. We ain't, you know, all these things eating it. And as I was reading the lesson, I was, you know, there was times that as a little kid or growing up, I was sneaking eat my own little stuff in the, you know, pulling out the purse and be putting the chewing gum in the mouth, knowing I shouldn't be doing it. I was degrading the temple. So God said to me on the way to church. There you go. Yeah. I mean, we, we put, worship is okay, but right now I just got, this is what he said to me. And I'm glad you brought it up. I was on my way to church this morning, so um, when I go to work, too, I mean, once you get into the doors, again, work is a different place, but you do some different work that you do in the temple. You have to turn your cell phones down when you do work. You can't have them, you can have them just barely when you maybe can hear or receive a text, but they can't be because it disturbed patient care. So same thing when we come to the temple. We have to turn off our cell phones. How many people, and I've seen it, I've seen it in Shiloh, <laughs> I've seen it at other churches, checking your cell phones while we are in the house of God. I have seen it, I've seen it, I've seen it. God said, you may not have stolen anything out of this temple. You may not have dot, dot, dot. But if you got your stop cell phone vibrate, as soon as it vibrates, you stop. But whatever you're doing and check it, you have just, uh, you have just degraded. Think about it. That tells God that your mind is more on who's calling you or getting ready to call you, whatever text that was text to you. For a moment, you just put me aside to check it out because you thought it was going on. Then, then hearing the word of God. I mean, we've all done it. And if we say we ain't, we lying. <laughs> I have a question now. Okay. That's the last thing that happened to the movie case. In a lot of cases, it could be a mercy. This is true, too. This is true. And God knows the difference. That's, that's, the, that's the key. He knows the difference. But some people don't do it for that reason. If you have a sick person at home and something's going on and you need to have your, God knows everybody's situation. But God knows some people are not coming in here because of that. Because if you make that sacrifice to come in here knowing you got a sick person, he's already honored you because you honored him. I'm moving forward anyway, knowing I got Mother Reed who might need me, but I'm right here for her too because I, you know. So God understands every, that's why he said in the scripture, I'm watching. When he, when, when he went in there and he talked to him, he said, I'm watching because he knows. He knows what you're thinking, you're thinking, I'm thinking. And he knows what's purpose in our hearts and minds. So he got you covered, man. If you're doing it for the right reasons, he got you.
But if, if he's not doing it, he knows it because he's a God that knows all. So he, he knows that, that's not disrespecting him in that way. That's you pressing on. You haven't let that situation prevent you from getting to the temple. You pressed on and came to the temple, and he honors that. But those who come to the temple for another agenda, like these people did, they came in there to do everything but worship, praise, and honor him. Those were the ones he got mad at because he knew their hearts. And he, he that's why he turned over those tables and all like that, because they were doing things in their hearts that weren't right, and they were doing it to de degrade versus to lift up the temple of God. So he knows. So that's the key thing. And that's why I love him so much, because he knows everybody's situation. Because your situation is certainly different from mine, and mine is different from some of the But because of who he is, and because of where he sits, he sees all, and he knows all. And he knows why we're doing everything we said we're going to do. And if it ain't to honor and glory him, and if he doesn't get glory out of the story, you've done it in vain. And he knows that. And he honors each one according to what we've done and how we've done it. He knows it. And I'm just so grateful that I can't sit and judge anybody. That's why none of us should get in a habit of judging because you don't know. And I know people have judged me so many days on so many things. And I said, if you only knew. And God said, you don't even have to tell them because really it's not for them to know because I know. I know why you did A plus B to make your C. Okay? And he knows why everybody's done their A and B to make their sin. He knows it. So it's, it's, that's between him and you. But those who've done it out of a, a contrite heart and a contrite spirit, those are the ones in this lesson that he's talking to. But growing up, I thought about it, you know, that she'd already said, no, we need that gum in church. And I was just disobedient with him, did, so I didn't honor God. I didn't. I, it might have been a small thing back then, but if you look back now, she was teaching at that time how to honor the temple. And I was disregarding it, disrespecting it. And we've all done it. We've all got to be honest here because honesty is the only thing that's going to get us through. And God knows anyway, so we might as well be honest in here and with other people who would act like we all holy and perfect because we've all sinned and we've all come short of the glory of God. If we say we have it, we lie to because we've all done something that has displeased God at one point in time. But he is loving, he's kind, he's generous, he's forgiving. And his mercies are what? New every day. So he gives us a new batch, and a new anointing, and a new start every day. So if anybody else want to comment right now? Well, so, so. I know what I was talking about. We were Just look, it is a shine, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what 
I'm working on. I'm working on my inside, glory to God. I'm working on those things that y'all can't see with your natural eyes, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I think this lesson um, just the temple of God and how Jesus he, he went in and, and he turned on those tables and he was angry. And I, I know when I was growing up, people used to say Jesus was in the table and in the temple he turned on the tables and he's seeing Jesus and seeing when he did that. And that's that's another key point that we have to remember. When you as a Christian see something that's not right because of who you are in Christ, you have a right to stand before the people and tell them. You're not doing it right. Because if you don't stand and tell that you're not doing it right, guess who God's going to hold him? He's going to hold you accountable because you had the opportunity to stand. And that's what Jesus did. He stood and he told me. He got angry about it, but he didn't see. It. Turning over those tables from the sea and he didn't cuss them out while he was, while he was uh, 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 turning over the tables. He just showed in action this ain't the thing to do. He says, You have built it up like this. I'm going to tear it down. And he told him not to do it again. He, he said, is it not written? I just think this verse is so key. Is it not written, my house shall be, will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it into a den of all. And then these people recognized, verse number uh, 18, the chief priests and the teachers of the law heard him and began looking, looking for a way to kill him, for they feared King. Feared him because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. He taught, he taught, he taught, he taught. And the only way we as people of God are going to get it is somebody's got to teach it. And Jesus was a teacher at that day and that time. Okay? And they, like they said, because they were amazed at his teaching. So that lets me know if, they, if we know that there's a teacher in the land, and that teacher is, so what is a teacher to do? A teacher is to instruct. Uh, a teacher, uh, after she instructs, she explains, because some people don't get the instructions clearly, and she goes through, he or she, they explain it where everybody can get it. And it's a mutual thing that most teachers that I've ever been around are not going to let the classroom go or the people, people go until they believe everybody's on one accord and understanding what is to be done and what is not to be done. So if you got that kind of person as Jesus was doing that and you doing something different and you don't want that to be come through, you want to stop him because you are afraid of the impact that that person is going to have. So the people that day were very afraid of what Jesus, the impact Jesus was going to have. So they were mad. We got to, we got to devise a plan to stop this man. We have got to stop him now before this thing gets bigger and he can teach that somewhere else. Today's time. How many people are so fearful sometimes of the man of God or the woman of God in whatever location you are? Because again, you've got a personal temple. So wherever you go, your, your temple is going. We, we're not taking a mind somewhere and our heart ain't falling. You know, we're, we're one person. So if I'm on my way to work and I get to work and they recognize that this temple here stands for the word of God and if she keep talking and she going to uh, be effective and, and win somebody else and I got to what? Shut her down. So I got to make it very difficult for this person where she, and that's what they wanted to do here. They really wanted to do that. They were fearful of that. They were fearful of the cleansing. But Jesus came in and cleansed the temple and he did it and he told them that I have, this is a house of prayer. The temple is set aside as a house of prayer. And again, when we started to pray this morning, we tied the, this sanctuary, this temple, this holy place that's set aside for worship and praise. We tied it to our, our, our personal temples, which should be the exact same way. Set aside. We should set aside our temples. Our temples should be holy. <coughs> We should not let anything enter into our mind, our body, our spirit, and our soul. It's not of Jesus Christ. That is my lesson, our lesson for this morning. I pray that um, we received and we heard God. And um, thank you all for your participation. And all the stages.
all I said, like I said, it's been a couple of years since I've talked. So um, I thank God for the opportunity. And um, I pray that you all receive from God this morning. And um, again, when we talk about the things we've done to, um, you know, dishonor the temple, and like Sister Orange was saying, uh, some things God, God just knows. God knows our heart. He knows what we're going to with our because I know personally I, I was um, battling this morning because sometimes when I speak, I get hoarse and I need a little water. So I said it over here, but I said, I'm not going to drink it unless I just have to because I was, it was messing with me. I didn't want to bring anything in. It should be in. But again, this temple of God, this sanctuary, this house of God, is set aside. It is the house of prayer. And the church of God should not look like any other building. It should not perform like any other building in the city of Huntsville. New Shiloh is set aside for a house of prayer. It's different, it is different than any other building in the city. Any other church that you attend that's a place of worship should be different. We don't do in the sanctuary, and we don't carry on in the sanctuary like we do attend to business in the streets. The two totally separate different things. We honor that in the business of
Self Wellness Restoration and Resurrection Month. Amen. Um, God really want us to be whole. He want us to be healthy. Amen. Uh, I write uh, to you, beloved of God. I can't express to you how grateful I am to be in my thoughts concerning the month of April uh, and its inspired focus. Believers will be encouraged to meditate upon God's healing promises and even to speak them over their bodies. I really want us to catch this. Uh, the Bible teaches us that God's word is life to the Sorry about that, Bishop. Okay, thank you. To those who find them and help to all their flesh. You know, you can find that in the book of Proverbs. The proverb of Burial writer gives us this uh, truth, and it echoes throughout the ages. This means, like Lazarus, okay, if we're sick, God's heart and will toward us is that we be healed and restored to good health. Amen? I'm going to say that again. I said, like Lazarus, that's the theme, scripture, that God has put in my spirit for this entire month that a lot of our uh, uh, leaders will be sharing with us from. But I want you to hear it from, you know, my heart. You know, why, you know, God has put this in my heart. Not just here, but in the whole entire body of Christ. <coughs> Amen. I'm, I'm finding out a lot through my... Uh, own uh, challenges and, and my own road to a full recovery. Amen. Uh, amen. amen. It's adding, but it does, it just adds to my testimony. Amen. And it's going to lend more credibility to the glory of God. I don't want anybody worried about me. Amen. Because God has got me. And I'm not just saying that. I'm, I'm saying what I know. I'm not saying what I think. I'm not saying what I, what I feel. I'm not speaking out of misturn. I know God has got me. And I know this sickness is not unto death. But it's, unto, it's to the glory of God. Amen. And that's what we thank and we bless God for. So, I mean, I, I, I've gotten serious about this sickness. <coughs> Amen. Yeah. I had to go to another level. I had to go to a to receive another anointing. Amen. Amen. When I lay hands upon the sick, I gotta really believe that God is a healer. Amen. amen. And if He's healed my own body, Amen. I, I, how else would I know? Except He heals me Himself. I will get to His name. So if we're sick, God's heart, here's God's heart. This is what I love about God. His heart and His will toward us is that we be healed and restored to the good health and the abundant life that Jesus Christ has for us. Amen. Amen. New Shadow this month, we're going to stand on that. Amen. And all through this month, you're going to hear that echoing. Amen. As, as we stand before the people of God. <coughs> God. Amen. Bottom line, <coughs> this month, at New Shadow, we are trusting God not only for my own healing, amen, because, you know, amen, that's room at the cross for all of us, amen, amen. and dreaded disease, cancer. Uh, Y'all see I spell it with a little bitty C. Because there's a name that's greater than the name cancer. Amen. That name is the name of Jesus. Amen. But for all who will receive the healing, wholeness, restoration, and resurrection power of Jesus, for all who will receive it, this power is available to them. And it's my prayer that through the messages and messengers this month, that each of us will see the Lord's heart. To heal us and our loved ones, knowing that he has already paid for it on the cross. Amen. By his stripes, I'm healed. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. He paid the cross. He paid the full price for our healing, health, and wholeness. Let's praise God. We have no condition. I, I want y'all to hear me this morning. I said we have no condition. 
I don't care what it is, that can be overpowered by the finished work of God on the right. I don't have a condition. Amen. And they gave me the report in Houston. Amen. I thank them for the report. Amen. But I told them no thank you for your treatment. Amen. 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 Because I know, amen, hallelujah, that God is God, amen, who wants me healed. Amen. So I don't want to receive treatment from folks who say you're not going to be healed. Amen. Why would I do that? Why would I receive treatments from somebody who say, <coughs> amen. So we aligned ourselves up with somebody, amen, who believes that we can. <laughs> and uh, we're, not, we're not on any chemo anymore. We're on all natural uh, remedies, amen, and uh, uh, above what uh, the natural remedies uh, are doing, amen, is God. Amen. amen. You know, God is good. They couldn't, they couldn't understand. Even the, the gentleman that we saw in Memphis couldn't understand. He couldn't understand uh, how I walked in the place. He, he had spoken and said, you know, you, you're supposed to already be dead. But I did. Amen. I told him, I, I'm living, amen, about the same. I know, I know I'm supposed to be dead. Amen. But hallelujah, I shall live and not die. I want us healed, people of God. We are we got some exciting things planned for this month. The gentleman uh yeah, uh, it's just just give me a body part of those just about my sorry. Let's make sure everybody gets one. Um, Just before service starts. Before Sunday in April, uh, we're going to have a health revival. We plan to have a health revival. And the man of God, whom God blessed me, and I share this story. Uh, Sometime the day as the Holy Spirit leads before Pastor Laura gets up and preach for us. Because I want you all to know, I, I don't want you to be uh, guessing about, uh, you know, the work of the Lord. So I want you to, I want you to know. Uh, but this, this, this man of God, he is the man of God. Uh, he's been... Uh, uh, studying uh, herbal uh, medicine for 35 years, we mm -hmm. 35 years. We have our own uh, uh, medically uh, inclined uh, minister among <coughs> us, uh, Jennifer Wilson, and I did share with her some of the things that, uh, you know, he has me uh, doing. So if you see me drinking some funny stuff out of the bottle, Amen. Don't worry about it. Just lift your hands up to Lord heaven. Amen. Amen. Because it's all natural. Amen. Amen. All natural plants, no chemicals <coughs> whatsoever. You see, how can you look so well? You know, how can you do that? Your hair ain't fell out, nothing. I mean, they, I mean my hair's supposed to be out. Amen. You know what I told them in that? That you don't have to look like it. Did I tell him that, Minister? I wish I had somebody. Come on, man. I said, you don't have to look like it. Amen. That's what you're going through, amen? That's right. When people see you, they don't, they, they're not supposed to see you all run down and bowed over. See, if you, listen, if, 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 if God says to cast your care upon him, Jesus, Jesus. amen, watch this, because he cares for you, if this is my care, and I cast it upon the Lord, well, I don't have it anymore. Amen. 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 I don't have a care. Amen. I don't have one. And I'm not going back to God and get it. Amen. And I know God wants to receive glory out of the care that I have 
because he what? He cares for me. He, that's the, he wants to receive the glory. So God, amen, hallelujah, is going to work it out. And I want us to confess, you know, uh, at our leisure as we um, focus on uh, this month. Please take these with you. Bring them, uh, uh, you know, with you, you know, uh, each uh, Sunday. Because uh, I, I don't know how the Holy Spirit will meet me uh, this month. But uh, we, we, we definitely want to uh, confess these scriptures over our lives. Open up our mouths, amen. And confess the uh, word of God, amen. When you're at home, amen. You know, lift up my name and confess these scriptures out loud. Jesus. Amen. Go Jesus. through your house and confess them, you know, uh, over your own life, over your loved one's life. You know, people, you know, uh, that are uh, facing, you know, physical challenges. Amen. Call them on the telephone. Uh, encourage them to get out here, you know, this month. Let them know uh, exactly what God has put in our heart this um Health revival is going to be absolutely uh, incredible when the man of God comes and uh, share with us uh, some of the things uh, he shared. Wow. I mean, it really blessed me. Really, 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 really blessed me. Gave me uh, more insight on what I should be putting in my body and what I shouldn't be putting in my body and why I shouldn't be putting it in my body. <laughs> You know, and uh, some of the stuff I've been eating for a long time. So uh, a lot of the problems, you know, that we have, I'm telling you, a lot of them are associated with what we eat. Amen. Amen. So, you know, we don't want folk to have to go through what I want to do. We don't want people to have to do that. We want people, amen, to go ahead on and uh, begin to change their uh, lifestyle a little bit because you know your eating really is a lifestyle it's not a uh, just a eating habit as we call it it's really a lifestyle amen so my whole lifestyle has kind of already changed amen it's kind of already changed it's not uh, those kind of guys that really kick you in the butt for eating meat and stuff like that it just simply uh, share with you, you know, uh, the different uh, challenges that you have to understand as a result of, uh, you know, eating meat and, and the kind of parasites that animals actually have, you know, and, and, and we're eating it. We're taking it in our bodies and we're eating it. And even when we cook our food, you know, uh, he said something to me that was so amazing, I'll share this with you all. And, uh, he said, you know, even the vegetables we eat are dead, they're dead vegetables because, uh, you know, you, give them, you put them in the pot and cook them to 350 degrees, you know, uh, you know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes or an hour, and you say, well, think about it, you know, Bishop, if I put you in a pot, you know, turn it up to 350 degrees, how long will you live? Amen. That made a lot of sense. Okay. So here, here's the key that I'm sharing with us is, is that, you know, just make sure we're balancing, you know, our eating habits. If you got green cabbage and all of that, and it's good, and we're not saying don't have it, we're just saying, you know, make sure you get a large salad to kind of, you know, balance it. Make sure the salad is bigger than you need. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, our meat is like this, and you got a little bit of salad like this. Yeah. Well, get you a little bit of piece of meat and get you a great bit of salad. Just, yeah. just start reversing it. And you'll be surprised how that's going to really, really, you know, help uh, your body, help you, you know, how you feel and all of that. I'm really excited, you know, about today. I'm so excited to see you. Uh, Brother and sister Jefferson. This is it, Mr. Lemon. This is it. 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 This is it.
testimony. Amen. God bless you. And you may welcome them. Amen. Some of you all don't know them. Get to know them. Please submit them. Here you go. Very good people. Get there at them this moment. Y'all come on in. <laughs>